Heads up, a thunderbolt is about to rip into the blanket of bland we call summer movies. The Dark Knight, director Christopher Nolan, absolute stunner of a follow-up to 2005, Batman Begins, is a potent provocation checked out as a comic book movie, feverish action, check, dazzling spectacle, check, devilish fun, check, but Nolan is just warming up. There is something raw and elemental at work in this artfully imagined universe. Striking out from his Batman origin story, Nolan cuts through to a deeper dimension. Huh? What? How can a conflicted guy in a bat suit and a villain with a cracked, painted-on clown smile speak to the essentials of the human condition? Just hang on for a shock to the system. The Dark Knight creates a place where good and evil, expected to do battle, decide instead to get it on and dance. I don't want to kill you, Heath Ledger's psycho Joker tells Christian Bell's Starworth with Batman. You complete me. Don't buy the tease. He means it. The trouble is that Batman, a.k.a. Playboy Bruce Wayne, has had it up to here with being the White Knight. He's pissed that the public sees him as a vigilante. He'll leave the hero stuff to District Attorney Harvey Dent and stop the DA from moving in on Rachel Dawes, the lady love who is Batman's only hope for a normal life. Everything gleams like sin in Gotham City. Cinematographer Wally Fitzer shot on location in Chicago bring a gritty reality to a cartoon fantasy. And the bad guys seems, seem jazzed by their evil doing. Take the Joker who treats a stunningly staged bank robbery like a private video game with accomplices in Joker masks. Blood spurting and only one winner. Nolan shot this sequence and three others for the IMAX screen with the finesse for a choreographing action that rivals Michael Mann's heat. But it's what's going on inside the bad head that pulls us in. Bell is electrifying as a fallibly human crusader at war with his own conscience. I can only speak superlatives of Ledger, who is mad, crazy, blazing brilliant as the Joker. Miles from Jack Nicholson's broadly funny take on the role in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. Ledger takes the role to the shadows, even where even what's comic is hardly a relief. No plastic mask for Ledger. His face is caked with moldy makeup that highlights the red scar of a grin. The grungy hair and the yellowing teeth of a hound flat fresh out of hell. To the clown prince of crime, a knife is preferably a, preferable to a gun. The better to savior the moment. The deft script by Nolan and his brother Jonathan taking note of Bob Kane's original, Batman and Frank Miller's bleak rethink, refuses to explain the Joker with pop psychology. Forget Freudian, Freudian hints about a dad who carved a smile into his son's face with the razor. As the Joker says, what doesn't kill you makes you stranger. The Joker represents the last completed role of Ledger, who died in January at 28 before finishing work on Terry Gilliam's The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. It's typical of Ledger's total commitment to films as diverse as Brokeback Mountain and I'm Not There that he does nothing out of vanity or the need to be liked. If there is a movement to get him the first post Hummus Oscar since Peter Finch won for 1976 Network. Sign me up. Ledger's Joker has no gray areas. He's all rampaging, ID. Watch him crash a party and circle Rachel, a woman torn between Bell's Bruce, she knows he's Batman, and Eckhart's DA, another lover she has to share with his civic duty. Hello, beautiful, says the Joker sniffling Rachel like a feral beast. He's right when he compares himself to a dog chasing a car. The chase is all. The Joker's sadism 
is limitless and the masochistic delight he takes in being punched and bloody to a pulp would shame the Marquise de Sade. I choose chaos as the Joker. And those words sum up what's at stake in the dark night. The Joker wants Batman to choose chaos as well. He knows humanity is what you lose while you're busy making plans to gain power. A reactor brings his A-game to show the lore of the dark side. Michael Caine purrs with sarcastic wit as Bruce Bruce's butler, Alfred, who harbors a secret that could crush his boss's spirit. Morgan Freeman radiates tough wisdom as Lucius Fox, the scientist who designs those wonderful toys. Wait till you get a load of the bat pod, but who finds his own standards being compromised? Gary Oldman is so skilled that he makes virtue exciting as Jim Gordon, the ultimate good cop, and as such a prime target for the Joker. As Harvey tells the caped crusader, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Eckhart earns major props for scarily and movingly portraying the DA's transformation into the dreaded Harvey Two-Face, an event sparked by the brutal murder of, major, of a major character. Not fair giving away the mysteries of the Dark Knight, it's enough to marvel at the way Nolan, a world-class filmmaker, be it momentum, insomnia, or the prestige, brings pop, escapism, whisper close to enduring art. It's enough to watch Bell chillingly render Batman as a lost warrior, evoking Al Pacino in The Godfather 2 in his delusion and desolation. It's enough to see Leisure conjure up the anarchy of the Sex Pistols and a clockwork orange as he creates a Joker for the ages. Go ahead about the movie being too long. At two and a half hours for short attention spans, it is. Too somber for the Hulk crowd, is it? Too smart for its own good? It isn't. The haunting and visionary Dark Knight soars on the wings of untamed imagination. It's full of surprises you don't see coming. And just try to get it out of your dreams.